Right, very interestingly, I've been told in the corner of the screen there, I've only got 12 and a half minutes, I've only got that much storage left, so I better not hang around. Um, football's coming back, we're going to talk about Ngakia in this video. Before I do, let me just take you through the schedule of the next few days, which is obviously quite important, obviously videos every day on this channel. Thursday night, tomorrow night, myself and Gio over on the main Hammers Chat channel, we're going to be doing our Wolves preview. Friday night for Patreon, we're going to be doing Mugger Tea, we're going to do that after the Manchester United game, by the way, so we can talk about all the games that have happened thus far, Saturday morning on Patreon, uh, breakfast in the morning with, with Gio and Gonzo. Probably buttered and Marmite crumpets for me. Don't know what Gio's at. Bagel. Gio likes a bagel. Um, then an hour before the game, when the lineups are announced, myself and Gio, over on Hammers Chat channel, on the main channel, we will be doing a build-up show, basically. Uh, if you want to watch the game with some biased commentary, um, then you can join Tom and Charlie over on the main channel for a live watch along. As soon as the match is finished, you can either commiserate or celebrate with myself and Geo. And that's obviously just as the final whistle has been blown. And then later on, we will be recording our player ratings video for patrons, which will either go up that night or next day. But don't worry, it will. we've got a lot of content. We've got family actions coming up on that channel and this channel. There's a lot of content coming up. Plus, we've got all, all the fallout and, and games coming thick and fast thereafter. Right, the subject at hand is Jeremy and Gakia again, and wish it would go away. It will very soon, because they will, he will either sign a contract or, or he'll leave in a week and a half. That's it's as, really is as simple as that. Why am I talking about it again today? What is new in the story, you may ask? Well, rumoured that he may well be um, he may have signed a pre-contract or about to sign a pre-contract with Watford. The other rumour is Liverpool. We'd already heard Crystal Palace with Tottenham and we'd heard Arsenal before. I've got to be honest with you, I am surprised at the calibre of clubs he's been linked with. But maybe I've got it wrong. It's quite a strange one. Watford one, I can sort of see. Watford took Domingos Quina off of us. Now, Quina, or Quina, 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 chicken dinner. He, he's a very different story to Ngakia because um, he was the star player at a Toulon tournament. That's basically the most prestigious international youth tournament in the world. Um, he was a star for Portugal. I, I thought he was actually the second best player at that tournament. Also in the um, in the Youth World Cup, he, he was wonderful. Looked like being one of the best young talents in the world. So for Watford to come in and poach him was was surprised, was disappointing. But I, I only bring that to your attention to to really mention that the difference in in international stature, if you like, in terms of Angakia, sorry, <laughs> Aquina and Angakia. I I'm really surprised about this, and the more I look into it, the more I think. Here's what I think happened at West Ham. I think Ngakia was on a few hundred quid. I think he was his scholarship terms were running out. And we're dealing with a kid here who wasn't even the best right back in our, in our youth team, basically. So I think the club wanted to renew his scholarship terms. He didn't look like he was anywhere close to our first team. At this point, we've got a right back, a youth right back ahead of him, who looked very, very promising, who's who had all and Ben Johnson, I'm talking about obviously, who'd already made a couple of starts against uh, Manchester City. So played some Premier League football. We also had Ryan Fredericks in there. We also had Zabaleta. So I think the club were just offering scholarship terms. Then because all the planets aligned, Zabaleta lost form, Fredericks got injured, Ben Johnson got injured. All of a sudden we needed a right back and Gakia was in there. At that point, I think the club have come back. Once he's so he's played, what's he played? Three or four games. The club have come back, not with the hundreds of pounds offer. They've come back with an offer that they feel represents somebody that's played three or four first team games. He's turned down the offer. Now I don't think that the club had any idea that he was going to feature in the first team at all. It really is as simple as that. But I thought when he played, I thought he played well. I thought he played surprisingly well. But I didn't think, I never thought we were looking at um, Cafu, if you know what I mean. I didn't think it was, um, oh, that's going to annoy me now. Well, I don't know what the guy's name is at, at Bayern Munich, the left back. You know, you're all shouting at the screen. Alfonso Davis. I didn't think we were looking at Alfonso Davis, put it that way. But 
I was just, whenever a young player goes in at West Ham, I don't ever think, oh, come on, you know, be a world beater, be world class, that sort of thing. I'm more or less thinking, don't don't ruin it for yourself. You know, have a steady game and, and build your career. I'm always fearful for them is the point I'm making. I'm always sort of scared that they're going to muck up. I thought he was really competent. I was really impressed. I was really pleased. I thought he came through unscathed. I thought he was he was improving. That's the level I thought he was, but I didn't ever think that it was going to be a case that Ngaki had nailed down. And, be, and I didn't ever think, this is our right back for the next 20, 10 whatever years, whatever the case may be. But maybe I was wrong. Maybe there was something else in there because we noticed he scored the goal against um, Crystal Palace. And now, I'd like to have seen the goal, but maybe it's good that we haven't because I think had we have seen the goal, it might have it might have changed our mindset somewhat. Apparently, it's a very good goal. Shifted it from his left foot to his right foot, banged it in from a long way out. I think if we'd have seen that, we might have been thinking, oh, oh, he's good. Maybe we should offer him um, some more money. So I think the club are offering money for a fourth choice right back who was possibly going to make it now as a professional footballer, whereas before they weren't sure he was going to make it as a professional footballer. I don't think it was... Even if you look at Reece Oxford, Reece Oxford was meant to be the next Bobby Moore for you know for quite some time, or the next Rio Ferdinand, whatever label you want to give him. Um, we, there are certain starlets in the academy who you know are coming through. You probably know at the moment that there's a kid called Kai Corbett coming through. He's meant to be excellent. Man United are interested. Barcelona apparently are sniffing around. You never got that with Ngakia. So Ngakia has almost sprung out of nowhere. And that can happen. That does happen. Sometimes people just get their chance. They take it and they run. So I'm wondering, have we actually got a better player on our hands than we initially thought? I don't know. I've not seen it. But as I understand it, I think now Moyes is making Moyes is making noise. <laughs> hey, that's good. Uh, Moyes is making noise that he might want to keep Ngakia. At that point, the club have really got to step up and try and secure a deal. So if Moyes is saying, hold on, I want this guy, the indications are, and this has surprised me, by the way, that Moyes may well be looking to play Ngakia in the first two games. Now, that's a pragmatist in Moyes. Why would Moyes be doing that? Moyes isn't silly enough to be doing that for a a, a statement of intent to the board or to play games with a player or play the game's agent. Moyes will be doing that because Moyes thinks that's the best right back at his disposal. Uh, is that going to happen? Um, uh, who knows? Who knows? Until it happens, we don't know. Maybe all this conversation is, it doesn't actually mean anything because Ryan Fredericks just plays it right back. It's as simple as that. But I think that's the pragmatist in Moyes. He's saying, well, a, a good player for two games may be the difference between West Ham staying up and going down. But at that point, you've got the club scrambling to offer him a deal. Now, it now appears that he doesn't want a deal, which is what we've been told all along. He, he didn't sign the scholarships. He didn't sign the second deal. And he, didn't sign, he didn't sign the third deal. The interesting thing now is he's not coming back. The club are saying that he's not coming back with an offer, a counter offer. He's not saying anything. They're not turning around and saying, give us 20 grand or give us anything. They're just not talking. They're being met with radio silence, which indicates he's off. Quite, when I first did my first Ngakia video, I'd contacted the club and they said, you know, we, we obviously worried that he might have signed pre-contract, or not pre-contract, that he might be looking to go elsewhere. It was actually an agent who told me, I wouldn't be surprised if he signed pre-contract elsewhere. So maybe that was done. Maybe we've just been having these conversations for the last, whatever, three weeks, hoping that he, um, that he reversed his decision. Maybe the decision was made. Six weeks ago, whatever. But now we hear that Liverpool are interested. And this has surprised me. I've got to say, is it... First of all, I find it hard to believe... But I understand why any player would want to go and play for Liverpool. Right, they are the, the best team in the league. And they're still the European champions, regardless of... There's no Champions League. They're the European champions, and really, they're the domestic champions as well. They are one of the best teams in Europe. If not, Well, they are the best team in Europe. They're one of the best teams in the world. They are all champions. Why do I keep... You get what I'm saying? They're a very good team. Excellent manager, excellent players. Any player would want to go and play for them. I absolutely, I get that. But have Liverpool not got a better right back in their youth team than Jeremy Ngakia? I find that strange. I, I, I would, because as I say, I don't, he's not, he's not, he's not England's right back. He's not at, at, at the youth level or anything like that. There are, there, there's, a, there's a kid, it might, his name might be Kenny. 
Maybe his name's Kenny at Everton, a right back. Looks really good. Really, really, you know, just looks looks ready for... Looks ready to take the, the league by storm. I like uh, Carl Walker-Peters. At Tottenham, looks, looks really, really good. I just thought there were a lot of players of Ngakia's type of standard around. So I find the Liverpool one a little bit odd. The article I read this morning was that they'd found the Liverpool, have Liverpool found the next Jeremy and Gak um, found the next Trent Alexander Arnold. I thought, whoa, 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 whoa I've not seen this. Ale Alexander Arnold, I I'm not sure how much of his career will play at right back, such as his talent for passing, um, for crossing, just for striking a ball. He strikes the ball as well over long distance as as anyone I've seen since Glenn Hoddle, quite frankly, he is extremely talented. I thought, well, hold on a second. That, this is not what I thought I was looking at with Ngakia, but I think the point is they've got Nathaniel Klein. Is he going to take... He's not going to take Alexander Arnold's place. Is he going to take Nathaniel Klein's place? Are they going to offer him a contract for that? I'd be really surprised if he signed for Liverpool. I've got to say, I'd be surprised if he signed for Arsenal, uh, Tottenham... But maybe we've all just got it wrong. I say we, maybe I've just got it wrong. Maybe he is an awful lot better than I thought he was, than the player I saw. It's a weird one. It really, it really is a weird one. I mean, I just wonder if this goal has clouded our judgment and, you know, maybe it's making us desperate, thinking, oh, hold on, we've got to... He banged a goal in from 25 yards. Maybe we've got a world-class player on our hands. We better sign him down to whatever contract he wants. I think it's a really difficult one. I think if he's already decided, you ain't going to change his mind at all. It's really is as simple as that. I've got to say, 11 minutes and 55 seconds, I think I've just about done it. So I'm going to go off. I'm going to clear my memory card out in preparation for the rest of the videos that we've got uh, coming up. Please do. Don't forget, I've had a couple of people um, say they're not getting notifications. Press the subscribe button and the bell. Okay, um, I really do have to go. I am honestly running out. Of